Hi everyone and welcome back to the George Collection. I'm Rachel Wrightside Blonde. Today I want to look at the inaugural issue of George Magazine again. In particular, I want to look at all of the references to George H.W. Bush in this first issue. Now there's been a lot of speculation as to why John Kennedy chose the name George for his magazine. And in his editor's letter, he says that it's because of George Washington. But if you dig deeper into this magazine, it certainly seems like there are quite a few references to George, uh, bullets, if you look at the front cover, and lots of other things as we take a look inside. So let's take a look in here and see what we can find. As I mentioned about the cover, first of all, we have George, dodging bullets, FBI, and American Revolution. I've always noticed those words, they kind of stand out from the cover. And it's kind of interesting that the name George, President, Bullets, FBI, and American Revolution are all on the front cover of John Kennedy Jr.'s inaugural issue. Obviously a lot of time and effort went into this first issue and especially the first cover because this was going to be the first impression to the public so it had to be a good one. So I really wanted to take another look in this particular magazine for extra clues because I think of all of them this would be one that would have a lot of clues in it. John F. Kennedy died at approximately one o'clock Central Standard Time today here in Dallas. Those shots killing one man nearly taking Trump's life, a Secret Service sniper taking him out. And the critical question now, why was the former president allowed to go on that stage? There were many Americans that simply did not believe that one person could have so inexorably altered the course of history. The Warren Commission, the official government investigation into the death of the president, concluded that despite the conspiracy theories, Oswald did indeed act alone. It was a conclusion that the then last surviving member of the commission, former President Gerald Ford, supported decades later. Here's what he told me in 1999. There were seven of us at the insistence of President Johnson. We came up with what I think are two very important decisions. Number one, that Lee Harvey Oswald committed the assassination. And secondly, the Warren Commission decided that we found no evidence of a conspiracy, foreign or domestic. Despite the former president's belief in the work of the commission that he served on, it would appear that 50 years after the assassination, most Americans do not agree with the lone gunman theory. A poll done for the Washington Post shows that 29% of those surveyed say they think Oswald acted alone. Fully 62% of you and your neighbors believe there was a broader plot. Sources telling ABC News, former President Trump met with the Secret Service Director Kim Cheadle on Tuesday. No, no, no. We're but in a wild and unexpected moment in the hallways of the Republican convention in Milwaukee, a group of Republican senators suddenly surrounding Cheadle demanding answers. Although she's scheduled to appear before Congress on Monday. Start answering our questions right now about the death of Donald Trump and allowing him to go on The video posted on Republican Senator Marsha Blackburn's ex account. I am having answer questions. Right. 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 This was a assassination attempt. You owe the people answers. Following Kennedy's assassination, officials tried to trace all possible witnesses. It was just, just right by us when it all happened, just right in front of us. Many were known only by nicknames like Umbrella Man, The Three Tramps, or Badge Man. It took until the 1990s to track most down, or in the case of Badge Man, prove they probably didn't exist, and the hunt isn't over. We still have no idea who the Babushka Lady was. Known for her Russian-style headscarf, the Babushka Lady was on Dealey Plaza filming the assassination. A piece of film would be of unimaginable historical importance. People have been searching for her for decades. In 1970, a woman named Beverly Oliver surfaced, claiming to be the mystery woman. But she said she knew who really killed Martin Luther King Jr., and claimed she was recording JFK's death with a camera that hadn't been invented yet. Yet, so serious historians tend to dismiss her. That means there's someone out there with unseen footage of a major historical event who has never turned herself in. Right now, we're only looking at this clip specifically. Here we go. Watch this, yeah. dude. Watch. You know, so Watch. She sits that's down. That's yep. Watch this. If you, uh, Puts the sign up. She's completely normal. And then watch. And then she's got her what the f***? What the f***? People are freaking out. And she's filming. And she's just like right there. 
Uh, have you been able to make any deductions or um, are there any indications of the shooter's motivation from those uh, electronic uh, holdings? So in terms of our ability to access it, we have uh, been able to um, get into and exploit a number of electronic devices, digital devices, but not all of them yet. What we've been able to find so far, a lot of the usual uh, repositories of information have not yielded um, anything notable in terms of motive uh, or like ideology. Um, and so one of the things that I can share here today that has not been shared yet is that we've just in the last couple of days uh, found that from our review, to your point about devices, uh, analysis of a laptop that the investigation ties to the shooter uh, reveals that on July 6th, he did a Google search for, quote, how far away was Oswald from Kennedy? We will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. Proud, proud, proud. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much, Wyoming. Thank you very much. Right away on the features page, we see a picture of Barbara Bush along with some other former first ladies. And then once we turn to this scoop, it talks about Barbara Bush's golden years, the trials of George Stephanopoulos, and the hunt for Tom Clancy's next book. So on this page, we have the words hunt, George, and Bush. So again, we have another reference with the wife obviously being mentioned, but also kind of in a more cryptic hidden way, the hunt for George Bush is all on this page. And then on page 208, there's an article called To Tell the Truth, where Cindy Crawford and another designer look at the clothing of different politicians and make comments on it. And it's just supposed to be telling the truth of what they think of their outfits. But on the cover page of this article, there's a picture of Barbara Bush and George H.W. Bush. And they both look shocked, like they're going to tell the truth about them. But I thought that was really interesting because that picture is not even one of them that they <laughs> look at. And obviously it's a play on the picture because they're looking at their outfits as if they're horrific, but it could mean something else. The picture of Barbara Bush and all of the other former first ladies that was on the features page is also found in this article. And it's kind of funny to read through Cindy Crawford's comments on, on their outfits. She said they look like nurses, but I think Barbara Bush looks like something else. <laughs> and one last thing, and I've been through this before, there is a car ad that says, welcome to the new world order. Who else said something about the New World Order? Is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a New World Order. New World Order. Where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind, peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. Did John Kennedy Jr. know about the New World Order back in 1995? And did he know George H.W. Bush's role in the New World Order? It certainly appears so, based on these connections. What I love about JFK Jr.'s George is that it did go back into history at times. But I feel that it spent most of its time worrying us about things that could potentially happen to us in the future, like the New World Order and like the survival guide in 1997 about the lung attacking virus and also Bill Gates talking about how he funds population control and also how he felt about the public giving up more of their freedoms after a bout of terrorism. The more I read through these original George magazines, the more convinced I am that the information provided was not random, but rather were warnings or foretellings of what could potentially happen to us. I mean, New World Order, George Bush, maybe we didn't see it in the 90s, but we sure see it now, don't we? That does it for this episode of the George Collection. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. Of this extraordinary magazine, George, which is a hoot of a magazine. I thought you were a lawyer. I was. What happened? 
Well, we uh, we decided. I mean, actually taking a cue from from folks like yourself and you around the 1992 election, that that there was an opportunity here to uh, change the definition of a political magazine. Uh, certainly, the way Americans were. Uh, accessing information about politics and politicians was changing. Uh, candidates were appearing on late night talk shows, on talk radio, on sitcoms, uh, and there was a, a kind of a leveling process and while the rest of media clearly had caught up with that, we felt that political magazines per se hadn't. Your mother was a hell of an editor at Doubleday. That's what I hear. Would she have liked George? I think she would have.